Okay, here we go. This is the building 37 atrium. This building's got like the coolest opening area of any building at Microsoft. Okay, I'm gonna teleport myself into the shot. Ready, watch this. Ha, check that out. Hey, this is Adam from Edge. Like I said, this is building 37. This is where they make windows. This is where it happens. All the product managers, guys that we talk to are over here. Steven Rose, the springboard guy, sits right up there. Um, other guys we've talked to, like the activation guy is Ram. He's up here on the third floor. Everything is really happening here in this building. There's other buildings too, but we're here in 37 today. I'm gonna go talk to Jeremy Chapman. We've talked to him before. He's the OS deployment guy, um, but he's got some good stuff for us today. Let's go check it out. We're back in Jeremy Chapman's office. How you doing, Jeremy? Great, Adam. Welcome back. <laughs> now you always have, you kind of have, it's like, it's like going into the, you have a lab here on your desk. We've got a whole bunch of machines here. Um, I've got to say, I'd probably do the most risky demos at events as well. I've usually got five laptops, and I'm deploying two or three of them at one given time to a client or server OS. So, Cool. Well, you definitely are the, the, the deployment guy, but today I, I want to take it a step prior to getting into deployment, and that's testing our apps and making sure that all the apps that we have are going to work when we're ready to go to Windows 7. Uh, so tell me a little bit about the resources that are available to do that. So we have a lot of resources and they're continually growing. Uh, the, probably the biggest resource that we have that will get you through most of the steps of application management in terms of collecting the apps that you have in your environment, analyzing those against compatibility data from the vendors from the community, and also uh, fixing those applications if you want to go to the next step and use things like compatibility fixes or shims to actually remediate apps. The App Compat Toolkit version 5.5, we released it on April 3rd. It's got a lot of tools in it that you can use to find the apps you have, determine whether they're compatible, and fix them in some cases. Okay, so, so we've got a tool that's going to go out and inventory all the apps that I have and help me determine if they're compatible. How much does this thing cost? How much is this? The good news is it's not $19.95. It's not even $9.95. It's free. It's something that you can get from the download center. You just go to Microsoft.com slash downloads. You do a search for ACT and you'll see App Compat Toolkit version 5.5. It's the only version up there. Download that. Uh, you'll need something like SQL uh, Server Express or Server 2008, SQL Server 2008 on that machine that you install it on so you can, so you can use the database functionality in it. And yeah, everything is, is freely downloadable. If you want to use SQL Server Express, that's a free uh, download as well. Okay. All right, so the first view that we have here is the, just the home page of the Application Compatibility Manager. This okay. is what what you get when you download the App Compat Toolkit and probably the primary tool within ACT. Now the first thing that we'll look at is how to create a data collection package. So now with um, ACT 5.5 we've got a couple of new features in terms of the data collection packages. Now I'm going to so let's just back up a package. step. Now the idea of these, these packages is this is the tool that's actually going to go out and figure out what's running on machines, right? Exactly. So this is a, it will create an MSI, and this MSI can be deployed through any software distribution mechanism, uh, group policy, for example, or config manager, system center essentials, you name it, anything that will get an MSI out to the client nodes. Mm -hmm. This will run for a period of days that you stipulate uh, within these fields. So you can choose when you want it to run. You can say as soon as possible, or you can specify a date. For example, if it's a, if it's a payroll department or accounting department that does things at a monthly or a quarterly or some other basis, then you can have it run during those uh, seasonality times. Okay. You can also determine the duration that it runs in days, in hours, or in minutes, and you can look at um, the upload intervals. So the more frequent they upload, uh, the more days that, they, that the agents are running, the more data you'll get. So you need to balance how much data you actually want to be able to process, how much data you can process in the, in the time. So we set a couple of defaults here with three days and eight hours to make sure the data is still processable and reasonable in terms of what you get returned to you. Okay, so the idea is now when we deploy this agent, it's going to run for that period of time and it's just going to watch what apps actually get run on the machine. Exactly, so it's going to detect a couple of, of areas by default and it's going to actually, um, it's going to see what the user has launched even if it wasn't something that it could detect from normal inventory mechanisms on the machine. Now a couple other things, we can determine whether or not we want to just collect inventory or also do, um, also do evaluation of, of compatibility for user account control or for Windows uh, compatibility here. So that will run a couple of uh, tests essentially against applications. What it does is it runs um, processes in between Windows Explorer and the app to detect issues with those apps that, it, that might flag compatibility problems later as you move from Windows XP that you'll run these agents on primarily 
moving into Windows Vista or Windows 7. Okay, so cool. So not only is it going to tell me what apps are running, it's actually going to tell me, you know, it looks like this app is requiring administrator pr privileges for something it's doing. Correct. Okay. Yeah, so the other thing that you can do with this is now with Act 5.5, we can give it labels. So we can actually label things, finance department, for example. And what that will tell us is, one, uh, that the finance department has this list of applications installed, or two, if, we've, if we're ready to deploy, we can see which departments aren't being blocked by incompatible apps as we're managing those apps out for the deployment. Okay, so we realize in that case that you know, our finance people, all their apps are compatible, we could actually make them our, our pilot group for Windows 7. Yes, yeah, so I'm just going to save that out. So now I've got a package that will, that will collect an inventory, but I've already got some inventory here that we're going to analyze quickly. So we've got a couple of reporting options. Uh, Windows 7 uh, RC reports at this point, because we're in the RC time frame. We've got Vista SP1 and SP2 reports, and Windows Vista reports. Now right now, in terms of the raw data that we have in our compatibility exchange, we'll start with uh, Windows Vista reports. Okay, so am I looking at, this is a list of the apps that were discovered in my environment, is that what I'm looking at here? Exactly, so I've done a query, uh, this is a sample in this case, on seven different machines. And here are the machines that I've queried um, at Microsoft here, this is a sample group. You can see I've got some XP machines, uh, Windows 7 machines as well, that I've queried and, and gotten some data on. Now the cool thing is I can see all the applications that those seven machines have installed on them. I can also see all of the devices and the hardware that those machines have installed on them and, and data on the hardware as well. So. And so this is, yeah, we can actually see here, we've got lots of green checkboxes. That means that these, these components are all compatible. Exactly. But cool. if I look at this one, for example, I, I drilled into the um, one with the, with the attention mark on it. It basically says this 3Com uh, device driver is available on Windows Update, so it gives us a bit more detail on whether or not it's compatible. And likewise, if I've got something that isn't compatible here, for example, this Rage, uh, Rage Ultra Pro uh, AGP from ATI, it will say the drivers for this device are obsolete right now. So we can see exactly what's going to work, what's not going to work, and in some cases there is there are some fields where the data is unknown, but mm -hmm. You know, if you look at some of these fields, you know, we have uh, various mouse controllers and other things that go into pretty minute details as to what they are. But again, I mean, it's like in the case of that ATI card, so we can see we don't have drivers specific for that. That doesn't mean Windows 7 is never going to run, right? It means it's probably just going to default to it. It just means that you should probably look at what, what's going to happen on that device if you're doing testing. And it may be in that case that it won't enable Arrow, but it will run fine with the standard interface. Okay. So All right, the, so we've got some great information here we've seen uh, on our hardware and our software. So the other thing is, so we've got our applications here now. Again, I'm in the Vista reports for now. As, as we get more and more rich data from, from vendors from our community, we'll have more data around Windows 7. But kind of as a rule of thumb now, you can look at the Windows Vista compatibility reports. It's not perfect parity as to what's compatible and not. But here you can see what data we have. And we can actually get the vendor assessment for various um, applications, things like uh, whether it's got a logo that it works uh, with Windows Vista, um, whether it's certified with Windows Vista, and there's a couple of apps that have the certification, the C um, demarcation. There are some other works, um, there's another work status here, which is the green checkbox, and then we have all the community um, assessment as well. So here we've got quite a bit of data on our 309 applications. Now let's just have a quick look at one of the applications that has a vendor assessment that says it works with some minor issues. So we're going to open it up and it's WinZip version 9.0. And we're going to look at the issues here. And the vendor actually has an action recommended to get the paid upgrade for WinZip version 9.0. So there is a compatible version for that software, just version 9.0 in this case doesn't work. Now, if we go into the application properties, we've got quite a bit of data in there as well, like file properties, where it's been added to add or remove programs, uh, any components there on the shell or shell extensions, and anything else that that, that vendor has actually inputted on the, on the application. We can tell which computers it was installed upon and whether there were any labels uh, assigned to that, to that app. So we have all this data now that we can use as to how we're going to fix this app. In this case, it's a matter of getting the compatible version, so we don't have to actually shim it or do anything to, to modify the code. So the other thing that 
a lot of people are asking for. And you see I've got some green check marks here in terms of send and receive status and some red boxes. So when you had ACT version 5.0 and you did the send and receive command, what would happen is there was a web service uh, held by Microsoft. The applications would get sent out to that web service and compared, and then we'd get you back the data, the vendor assessment, the community assessment data, and the issues, etc. Now what you didn't see was exactly what was being compared. So now I've actually opted out in this case of sending a few items, and here I can show you how that's done. I just click 